everyone, I'm Kat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a fun video. I wanted to do this video because I talked about in my June TBR how I'm in kind of a weird mood with my reading. I don't know, a lot of things on my TBR just aren't calling to me. I don't have a specific genre or book that is pulling me at the moment. And I saw Kayla from Books and Lala recently did this video where she had a scavenger hunt pick her next read. I believe Peter Mon is the original creator of this tag game. Um, I think Kayla might have changed around a few of the questions. I took the questions from her video. I think normally in these videos people just do the scavenger hunt, pick their next read, and then the video's over, but I'm actually going to do a little mini vlog. We're going to read the book together. Um, I don't know. It just feels more complete to me. So I grabbed all of my unread books that I own, and then I went to the library and grabbed some books that I would be down to read at the moment. I took a quick look through the questions and prompts, and we might have to fudge around with them a little bit just because there are some where you actually have to like look in the physical book um and go to a specific page or like go to the acknowledgments or something and i don't own a lot of books so i might not be able to do that perfectly so we might need to fits with the prompts a bit to make it work for me i think that's it i'm excited i'm a little nervous i feel like my next read is completely out of my hands with my tbr game i still have like quite a bit of choice with that and of course throughout the month i can choose whether or not to read the book but like Whatever we get today, we're reading. So the first prompt is to grab your favorite book, go to the acknowledgements, and the first name you see, find a book by an author with the same name. My favorite book. I actually don't know what I would say my favorite book of all time is, so I'm just gonna pick my favorite book of the year so far. I grabbed my top two. I have been going back and forth on which one of these is my number one. Um, right now, if you asked me, I think I would say A Certain Hunger. So let's go to the acknowledgements. Okay, and just the first name I see, not like the first name in the acknowledgements. Let me like pull the book back, unfocus my eyes. Olivia. Okay, I don't know if I have any authors named Olivia. I don't. Okay, let's see another name. Jen. Oh, you know what? I was looking at my TBR shelf, but this can actually be a book that you have read. So a book by someone named Olivia, I have Serial Cheaters by Olivia Flagger. So the next prompt is to pick something on that cover and find another book with that thing in the title. Okay, the only thing on this cover really is a knife. I guess I could do like a hand or some blood maybe. I was gonna say the first thing that comes to mind is in my dreams I hold a knife, but that actually has scissors on the cover. I think the next prompt is something I actually have to look inside the book of. So let me pick something off of my shelf. Okay, I'm gonna go with My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. So for this, I have to go to page 50, line five, pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. Page 50. One, two, three, four, five. Putting up Halloween decorations, the holiday was almost their favorite. Nothing immediately jumps out to me. I mean, how cheaty can we get? Can we use like the? Okay, the only word that worked for me was up. So I'm gonna go with Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki. From here, I have to find a five-star read with the same colors on the cover. So this, this might be pretty easy because the cover of this is mostly pink. There's some greens, some blues, black, like orangish peach. This might be kind of a stretch, but how do we feel about Summer of Salt? I know off the bat, it doesn't look like it matches, but like we have the girl with black hair. The pink collar on this shirt kind of matches the pink. This blue in the title kind of matches the blue background. How else can I, how else can I cheat here? We have the person facing away and we have both people facing away here. This is actually harder than I thought. I was like, oh, I feel like I have a lot of pink books, but I really don't. I'm gonna allow this one. For this one, I have to find a book with the same number of pages. This is 256. For this, I grabbed The Girl from the Sea by Valley Knox Ostertag. This is also 256 pages. So I need to flip open to any page. The first name you see, find a book by an author who shares that name. This might be kind of hard just because there's not a lot of like words on each page and there's also no like dialogue markers, you know, like Kat said. Let's see. Serena? I don't think I have any authors named Serena. Do we pick books that are nowhere on our shelves? I don't think so. Let me flip around a bit more. Morgan. So Morgan Works, Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. For this one, I have to find another title with the same number of letters. So Honey Girl has nine letters is that right <laughs> yes let's see if i can pick a book 
from one of these stacks. Okay, <laughs> first one I picked uh, works, Little Eve by Katrina Ward. The next prompt is to find a book with a similar cover. That might be kind of hard. This is like Stonehenge-esque. Hmm. I think I'm gonna try and find just a book that has like a sky scene on the cover. Okay, I grabbed a few that I can argue work. Near the Bone, you know, it kind of has the sky scene, but there's also some like landscapey things in the foreground. Everything all at once. There is a sky. That's about it. Every other weekend. I don't think this one is right either. There's a sky, but it's just not the same vibe. This has like an ominous vibe to it. The last one I grabbed is Hidden Pictures. Again, we have the sky, some stuff in the foreground. Sorry for the dump truck. I think these are my two best options. And I think, I think Near the Bone is the winner. It kind of, I don't know. I feel like the tones just match. Okay, now this is the last prompt. So I have to flip to a random page, point out a word, and then find that word in a book title on my TBR shelf. So let's flip there. And I'll point there. Way. Does anything have way in it? I don't think so. I can also look at all the other books I have on my TBR shelf on Goodreads, um, but I kind of do want something to read physically this weekend. I'm planning to go to the beach, so I want something I can read while I'm sitting there. All right, let's open again. Let's go here. Just. I don't think I have anything with that either. There. Path. I feel like I could make an argument for The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. You're on a road trip. You're on a path going somewhere. We're gonna have to start getting creative here, guys. There. She. I think I could argue for Delilah Green Doesn't Care and Finley Donovan because they're both women in the title who presumably use she, her pronouns. I want to get something better than that, though. Her. Same argument. Okay. After. I know what I can read. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Is there anything else? I think this is the only one that works and I don't know why I'm checking for anything else because I'm really excited to read this. So this actually came up on my June TBR as well. I picked it for the prompt of a five-star prediction because I think I'm absolutely gonna love this book. And oh, I mentioned I'm going to the beach this weekend. What a perfect beach read. It's a romance set in like a small seaside town. This couldn't have gone better. I was getting a little nervous because nothing was working for the words I was getting, but like, this is the perfect outcome. I don't make the most sense in this update feeling like a little sun drunk you know when you just spend all day out in the sun and you're just a little bit like tired and groggy a little loopy the beach was great i love the lake so much i love being on the lake and then i came home and i was looking at lakefront properties to buy and honestly i think it's maybe attainable one day in the, in the future not right now but like in new jersey you cannot find a lake or beachfront property under a million dollars. But I was looking like around Virginia and in North Carolina and I think I can make it happen one day. Let's start manifesting guys. Um, anyway, I got like almost halfway into every summer after while I was at the lake today and I'm loving it. You know when you see a book and you just know you're gonna love it? Like this just has so many elements that I love. And the reason I added to my TBR is because I saw Emily Henry, who I'm like borderline obsessed with, <laughs> uh, talking about it so much. She like read it and was absolutely in love with it. And I'm absolutely in love with Emily Henry and her books. So I just, I thought this was gonna be for me. And it definitely is. And it definitely has very similar vibes to an Emily Henry romance. I'm actually rereading People Meet on Vacation right now. I'm listening to the audiobook and the two writing styles are just very similar. So 
so far. Obviously I'm not done yet, but I think if you enjoy Emily and Henry's romance novels, you will like this. And actually it is kind of similar to People Meet on Vacation because you have these two people who used to be very, very close friends um, and you know something has broken that friendship apart and now years later they are coming back together and facing each other again. We are following a woman named Persephone or Percy and all throughout her childhood her family owned a cabin I think they lived in Toronto, but they own a cabin that is like four hours north of Toronto um, and they spent the summers there and a family lived next door full time and she became friends with their son. So they had these like incredible summers together. They spent some holidays together. They emailed back and forth when they weren't together. Um, I think it was for like seven years, but then something happened on that final year. And now I believe it's like 12 years later and they haven't spoken since then but something has happened to someone from that town um, and Percy also hasn't been back to this little seaside, well I guess it's a lakeside town since then, um, but something happens to someone from there and she decides to return. We're getting alternating chapters set in the present and then some flashback chapters and I'm really loving the flashback chapters. It's just exactly what I wanted out of this book, just the vibes of it, the days spent on the lake, in the small town, um, and the friends to lovers is just, they meet when I think they're 13. So it is just purely friendship at first, purely platonic. And it's just really sweet. And I love watching their friendship develop. I do think I know why they stopped talking, which I don't feel like I'm supposed to, but I think the hints towards it are pretty heavy handed, but like, I don't really care. It's not like it's a thriller or a mystery or anything. Um, I don't care if like the reveal is spoiled for me or it's predictable a little bit. I do also think I want like a bit more out of the characters. I could tell you a few things about each of them, but I don't feel like I know the bigger parts of their personalities, if that makes sense. Like what makes them truly them. I could tell you that Percy really loves horror movies and now current day she works as an editor and Sam is a doctor and he's kind of awkward, but really sweet. But further than that, I think I would have a hard time describing them to you. Even though I do, I am really liking both of them and I'm really enjoying the story. But I'm hoping I learn more about like, what, what makes them them? What makes them tick? Sorry if you can hear the car being on in the AC. I cannot turn it off. Usually I do to do a little car update, but I cannot. The real feel is 104 today. We're struggling but it's gonna be quick i don't really have anything to talk about i just want to show a quick before of my hair i'm about to go get it cut it looks ugly right now because it's been up in a claw clip all day but i'm getting it cut pretty short i had short hair like pretty much all my life like when i think about myself i think about myself having short hair it's just been the past couple years that i've been keeping it long and actually liking it normally when i have long hair i just like don't like how I look with it. I don't like having to style it, but I've been enjoying styling it. But lately it's just been annoying me and I feel like for summer, it'd be nice to have something shorter and with some layers, just like, I'm a, I'm a hot woman. I just don't want hair on me. Um, so I'm gonna get a cut. I'm excited and I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, it's done. I think I love it. I need to go home and like fits with it a bit and like style it how I think I would. Although I kind of like this just like, these are just my natural waves. She like wetted a bit, but it dried because it's so fucking hot. Um, I kind of love it. Okay, this is maybe gonna be a bad review because I just, I don't feel like reviewing this critically. One of my goals this year was actually to be less critical about books, um, which is kind of funny because before I had a booktube channel, before I was like writing reviews on Goodreads and stuff, I very rarely thought about <laughs> what I thought about a book. It was just kind of like, oh, this was entertaining and it was good, or this was not entertaining and it was bad. But when I started booktube, I was like, okay, I need to start thinking more critically about what I'm reading because I need to have something to say, obviously. But I think, I think I've let the, pend <laughs> the pendulum swing too far because I just feel like I'm too critical of books nowadays. And there are books I think I would have read like five, six years ago that I just would have had a good time with, but now I'm giving them like two or three stars because I'm getting more nitpicky with it and I'm looking at the writing and character development and plot holes. I'm no longer just like, 
ooga booga, look good. And after I finished this last night, I was sitting there and I was thinking about different things I could bring up that I didn't absolutely love. But I was like, you know what? I had a fucking good time reading this. The vibes of it were incredible. I absolutely loved the setting. I enjoyed the characters, even though I mentioned before, I felt like they were kind of surface level and I wanted to get more into them and their thoughts and feelings and motivations. But like, I don't know, by the end of it, I just didn't really care. I just had a really good time reading this. I think it's the perfect summer beachy lakeside read, although it is a bit more emotional than what I normally think of as like a summer read. When I think summer read or summer romance specifically, I think like light, fun, funny. Um, there are definitely some more emotional topics in here, but it wasn't ever too heavy or too much. Another way that this reminded me of Emily Henry's books is I liked that the characters felt very real and they made mistakes and they fucked up and their relationship and their friendship was not perfect. But at the end of the day, they just decided like, we love each other, you are my person, we care about each other, let's make it work. And that's kind of as far as I want my critical thoughts to go. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm gonna give it five stars. Would definitely recommend it and I will definitely continue to pick up from this author. I hope you guys enjoyed this video with the scavenger hunt but also a little mini vlog of me reading this book. I always kind of want to do dedicated vlogs to just reading one book but I'm always worried like if I don't have that much to say or talk about or if I end up hating the book the video kind of seems sad. Um, so I think like offsetting that with a bit of like a sit down video at the beginning of this with the scavenger hunt is kind of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye! Thank you.